they ejaculate, they die. This is f***ing wild. They actually mate in a place in the sky. It's basically like a nightclub. What you're saying is that there is a giant bee nightclub in the sky where the males shag their mum and once they've shot their load, they explode in mid-air. <laughs> this will have to be an extended episode, I'm afraid, Ryan. And the reason that honey bees do die whenever they sting you is that they have like a barbed stinger. So whenever it goes into the skin and the bee flies away, it pulls their digestive tract out of their <laughs> arsehole, basically. <laughs> like a prolapse. Yeah, like a massive prolapse. I'm gonna break off the tip. Ah! 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 Why are you shaking your head? It's the waggle dance. Okay. Hi, you are watching Things People Do with me, Jamala, on YouTube. Click like or subscribe. Only click like if you like it. In fact, no, click like if you don't like it. Because we all lie sometimes. Click subscribe if you want to be subscribed. <sighs> I'm out of breath. Enjoy. Hello, Emma the beekeeper. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So you're a beekeeper, are you? I am. You keep bees? I do. I look after them. Like bzzz. Yeah, like the ones that sting you. We're buzzing for this, aren't we, Jan? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be one of those episodes, yep. is it? I'm going to keep saying that all the have way. Have you got all these lined up? <laughs> oh, for you're gonna fuck's have to find sake. Out. Right, Emma, when did you become a beekeeper? It was about 10 years ago and it was like a complete accident. I wasn't, wasn't really interested in bees, had no interest in them whatsoever. Had never really thought about them. And actually, whenever I think about it, I had never seen a honeybee and knew that it was a honeybee until about 10 years ago. And then it just all happened. And okay. it just, just, we will get into that yeah. because you just said honeybee as if like there's different bees. Oh, there's different bees. Oh my God. I know. Fuck. I know. But 10 years ago, you started keeping bees. Yeah. Forgive me, mm -hmm. you'll have to. Okay. Because I've got this stereotype of beekeepers right. well, in my in my mind. And most of that's true. And you turned up at the studio, mm -hmm. and I went, "Who's that then?" Because <laughs> you know you don't look like the stereotypical beekeeper. I'm not the stereotypical beekeeper. So was that part? Is that part of it? As in, you you make quite a considered effort to be non-stereotype beekeeper, or? That, that's just you. That's you just, just like me. keeping bees. That's just me, and I like keeping bees. I'm like the Sinead O'Connor of beekeeping. <laughs> when you say you didn't expect Emma to look like she does, do, do you mean that she's not wearing like a massive white I'm not outfit 85. With, a, <laughs> with netting across her face and big, thick white gloves? I didn't expect her to come in her uniform. My stereotype of a beekeeper is 55. Okay, quite specific. Plus. Okay, less specific. And... Long hair, like really long, sort of unkept hair. <laughs> Why long thin, hair? Thin, thin hair. Yeah, thinning, quite thinning, but lovely. Not because not really bothered, like because they're more bothered about the bees. Like and, a hippie. Yeah, a bit hippie-ish. Yeah. Probably, like slightly higher on the BMI scale. <laughs> okay. But not like me high. Okay. Not me high, and like dirty fingernails. Why dirty? Like outdoors, because they're working outdoors a lot. Okay. All of which, that is is not you. I'm so glad that oh. I didn't hit any of those stereotypes. Okay. <laughs> I've got a question for you early on, Joe. Um, are you a bee man or a wasp man? <gasps> I'm both. You're both? I'm both. I love wasps. I think I, I'll probably go bee. They strike me as more cuddly mm. and more cute. Like, oh, I could have a bee as a friend. Less aggressive? Yeah. Wha well, there's a story why wasps are so aggressive. Oh. And actually, wasps are really, really important. And the wasps that we see on, like, the ones that, like, hang around in the beer gardens and stuff, they're, they're, like, there's lots of different species of wasps, but they're, like, the only social wasp that we have. So they, like, colonise, like, bees, in the sense that they have a queen and they have workers and whatever. But um, the wasps, wasps are about from early spring until uh, late, probably this time of year, like, sort of late autumn. Where do they go in between? Well, they all die out. So and there's they, literally they no leave. alive wasps in Well, they'll, no, they leave behind mated queens. So the worker wasps, the wasps that you see and the wasps that, you sting you, that sting you are female. And, and same with bees. So male bees don't sting. It's only female bees. But the, what, what happens with the wasps are the worker wasps can only eat a regurgitated substance. So they, they pollinate. The worker wasps pollinate. 
and they collect nectar and eat all of the green fly and aphids and all of the little Legends. little bugs, absolutely, that kill your plants. So they eat all of those. They bring them, they, they, they get those little bugs and nectar and stuff, bring it back to the, the nest, which is like an onion-shaped kind of thing, um, and, and paper, made of paper. They what, actual it, paper? Well, that's how paper was discovered. What? Yeah. Fucking hell. You're going 100 miles an hour and I cannot keep up with this. <laughs> Sorry. It's made of paper? Yeah. And that's how paper was discovered? Yeah, I they, thought the like Egyptians mulch. discovered paper. No, I think it was the Chinese. Right, right, well... I think it was the Chinese. Don't trust Joe on three. this one, really, honestly. I don't know. Maybe, look, I've... Are you not thinking of bed sheets with the Egyptians? The Egyptian cotton. Stop it. <laughs> So the worker wasps, they collect the nectar and the, the green flies and stuff, bring it back. They feed it to the larva. The larva regurgitate a substance and feed, and that's how the worker wasps eat. So whenever, at the end of the season, whenever they start becoming nuisances, it's because the queen has died, the colony has collapsed, there's no more larva, so they've not got any more food. So that's where they come for a larva? Yes. They've got no queen, nothing to do, and they've nothing to eat, so that's whenever they become nuisances. So I always say to people, do not kill wasps before August. After August... Playing. Fine, work away. So if you do you keep your own bees? Have mm -hmm. you got like Yeah, yeah. So I've got two different apiaries, which is an apiary is the place. So I'm beekeeping is an apiarist. Oh. Yeah, a so, a, a what? Well, an apiarist. A P I'm dyslexic, so I always find this difficult. A P I A R I S T. So it's um yeah, it's like it's the keeping of bees is ap Maybe that word may not exist. I like it. So an apiary is what we think of as a hive. It's one of those sort of uh, white things with multiple layers and trays that come out of it. Do you know, that, that, that I was watching a, a, a Netflix thing recently and there was hives on it and they had beautiful hives like that. But that's not what we look Is that the Beckham one? Yeah. Oh. No, it's just perfect. It's I wish it looked like that, but it doesn't. So it's, that's not true? That, well, it... And I think in that in that world it maybe is. Oh yeah. Yeah, and some beekeepers do have lovely, beautiful hives. But basically, so an, an apiary is a collection of hives. Oh. So a beehive is where they live, and a collection of beehives is an apiary. That's where your apiary is. So we have two different apiaries at the minute. Of fourteen different hives, but I lost quite a few hives to pesticide oh. um, poisoning a, few, um, a wee while ago. So I did lose quite a lot of hives. So we're kind of building it back up again. So a hive, a hive, mm -hmm. a hive. Yeah is just like a tray is it it's basically a box so there, box. there's a brood box yeah and it's called different things in different parts of the world the americans call it some, something different but we call it a brood box i think they call it a deep and that is where the brood lives so it'll be the queen and all of the eggs and larvae and all of the worker bees and drones but drones are male but they're only there if you like at certain times of the year because men don't really do anything in the honeybee world. Mm, so. Kelsey Price, yeah. Interesting they the way you said that sentence. And, and then sort of looked at me and thought, <laughs> as if, like... Well, it's quite funny, though. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because one of the really interesting things about, about worker bees is that they tell the queen when she needs to lay um, an unfertilised egg. And the unfertilised egg is the male. The male is a genetic, a genetic copy of the queen. But... That they're what? only required for like the mating season, which would be kind of, you know, mid spring to uh, late summer. And then whenever the mating season is over, the worker bees get all of the men, all of the drones, and they fire them out the front door. And they're like, what? Ah, you're not getting back in again. And they all die of exposure. What? <laughs> so hang on. So the, the male bee uh -huh. is literally there for stub purposes. Yeah. And pretty much when his work is done and the seed is sown, he's booted out of the family home mm -hmm. and dies. Well, if the seed's sown, he explodes in the air. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he explodes. Why have you ever seen an exploding bee? Have you ever seen an exploding bee? You, are we really talking like they actually explode? Or you just Is that a well, like, way of yeah. saying ejaculation? Well, they kind of... <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> <laughs> is that what you... Well, whenever, whenever they ejaculate, they die. So they, they, sorry, I said We that all quite feel like that sometimes. Really? <laughs> Most of them are kit. I got a minute. This image in my no, face. This, yeah, this. this is fucking wild. This is all over the place, mate. I just lost it. <laughs> I've fucking lost it. I don't know it. how we got from. Nice so these bees, to... so these male bees, known as drones, yeah. their one job is to mate. Yes. Okay. On my fact sheet here, mm -hmm. I've got... By fact sheet, you mean the things you've written down in your notepad? <laughs> yeah, that says at the top, B-facts. The fact that you've called it a fact sheet 
is more of a fact than your fact sheet. So when they mate, mm -hmm. why do they have to mate with a queen outside of the hive? Because is that a thing? Well, the queen's the queen in the hive will generally be their mother. <laughs> unless the, the queen hell is going on in these unless hives? the queen unless the colony has requeened the hive and there's still drones there but there's a new queen in which case it wouldn't be but like for like all, all intents and purposes that the queen in the hive will be the drone's mum so they they actually mate in um what's known as a dca a drone collection or conservation anyway a place in the sky where all of the drones go and all of the newly hatched queens go and nobody what? knows and there's they're everywhere but right? but every area will have its own little place it's basically like a nightclub well, in on. the sky we need to go through this point by point so what, how long what, is this episode going to be because <laughs> fuck we haven't even got through like four questions and right this will have to be an extended episode i'm afraid ryan okay you've got work to do Go to. Okay, clarifications, Emma. So what you're saying to me and Joe is that there is a giant bee nightclub in the sky where the males shag their mum. No, they don't shag their mum. And mom. once they've shot their load, they explode in mid-air. <laughs> uh, well, everything apart from the mum thing. Oh, but they, but sometimes, I mean, <laughs> there is a possibility that that might happen. <laughs> so the queen will meet with like 15 or so different. Over what room. time period? Like, well, she'll do a few different mating flights. Is she flying while she's up there? They, sh they shag while they fly? Yeah, on the wing. And that's why drones have bigger <laughs> eyes and stronger wings. Because they need to be really strong. How do they... To if, do it, to do it. How do they thing. couple? Yeah, you could, like... <laughs> it's, it's like... I think it's like a doggy thing kind of thing. It. Yeah. They're bees. You can't do <laughs> <laughs> Just pitch me. Just pitch me. I would be so bad <laughs> as a drone bee because I could not shag in the air. Like, <laughs> how long could you stay up for? Like, with my <laughs> with my arms flapping <laughs> and like I'm trying to like, <laughs> I couldn't. But I'd the, be all out of rhythm. No, but the issue is you're thinking of yourself with wings rather than a bee version of Joe. Because if you're a bee Joe, your wings are amazing. Yeah, they'll be really you're, strong. You're, you're literally you're, genetically yeah. designed mm -hmm. to shag mid air. Oh. You're thinking, if I were Joe and I was trying to shag me there, which is obviously much more difficult. Oh, okay. yeah. That's, that makes more sense then. <laughs> talking of talking of flying, <laughs> did you know that honeybees, honeybees wing, hun, honeybees wing strokes, eleven thousand four hundred per minute. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't even work as a sentence. So that me. means that means they flap their wings, they stroke their wings six hundred and eighty-four thousand times an hour. <laughs> You're just gonna keep times in this by twenty-four. Which means in a day, the fucking bee honeybees flap their wings sixteen million four hundred and sixteen thousand wow. times a day. Wow. And often. While shagging at the same time. They're fucking... Surely they're exhausted. Is this why they explode? <laughs> Maybe it is. Pure exhaustion. Right, I might, guys. Right, how do we get back to some sort of um, structure? Should we do types of bees? Of this? Because you've talked about honeybees. I didn't even know what drones were. So can we talk about the other types of bee, Emma? Yeah, species or... So in, in that you've honeybees and you've got bumblebees. Bless them. Love them. Are they not the same? Why aren't they the same bee. thing? Well, bumblebees are like, they're the fat, fuzzy ones. They're the well, cute guys. I looked at you, yeah. haven't I? No, I didn't. <laughs> it wasn't so, just a look, mate. You shifted your whole body. <laughs> you went. <laughs> <laughs> or a chubsy wubsy. <laughs> yes, you would be the bumblebee. But I like bumblebees. Oh, bumblebees are awesome. Okay. I really like a yeah. bumblebee. Yeah. So I did, like, a couple of years ago, I rescued quite a lot of bumblebee house. Um, I had to stop it this year because we opened a shop anyway. But what, what do they do? Or, or are they just bumbling about the place? Well, they're pollinators. They're pollinators. Um, and they... Um, and a pollinator is someone that spreads pollen. Yeah. Uh -huh. There might be listeners like me that don't know what a pollinator is. <laughs> okay? I need why, why are bumblebees more charming? Is it because they literally look like they're a bit heavy? They're like, oh, sorry, it's bumped into again. Ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think I read somewhere that they're like technically they're not supposed to be able to fly because their bodies are so big and their wings are so small, but they do anyway. Yeah, fair play um, bumbles. Yeah. yeah, I do like, and there's so many different types of bumblebees. So you'll get like big, massive ones and little tiny ones, and then there's like a cuckoo bumblebee, which is a bumblebee that is really a solitary bee and pretends to be a non-solitary bee and then goes into other bumblebees' <laughs> nests and kills a queen and then <laughs> take, uh, yeah. So but they're like a incel. Yeah, they're like yeah, like yeah, terrorists. Oh my god, bumblebee terrorists. I never saw that in a bumblebee. I always thought they were quite friendly and just a well, bit hapless. Well, there's only a few cuckoos, uh, cuckoo bumblebee species, not as many as the normal ones. But bumblebees, like wasps, they whenever it comes to the end of the season, which will be slightly earlier for them, which is generally um, whenever autumn hits, they're called. They leave queens, mated queens, behind. Their colony completely collapses so everybody dies out apart from the newly mated queens who hibernate like in the ground in and the then ground. in the ground yeah and then as soon as the 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 soil warms up then sort of march april time the queen comes up and she's made she's got all of her eggs and then she starts the nest from complete scratch um herself so she will go out and forage she will collect all of the, um, she'll make the wax and then she'll collect all of the like bits and pieces that she makes her nest out of. And then she lays her first larva and she raises them and then they take over and she just becomes a, an egg layer. Who, who decides this queen? It's a really, really good question. So um, at honeybee terms, it's, it's decided. So it'll always be a female egg. So the, the queen can lay a fertilized and an unfertilized egg. So the fertilized egg will be a female, which will either be a worker bee or potentially a new queen. And the unfertilized egg will be the men, the male egg that we talked about before. So um, whenever it comes to deciding who's queen, the worker bees decide that. So they will get an egg and I've started to breed my own queens this year. So it's a really, really interesting process. So the worker bees will get, um, they will decide that they need to have a queen for so many different reasons. But it could be that the old queen's run out of eggs, not maybe laying as well as she should have been. Or it could be um, because um, maybe the beekeepers accidentally cut her head off or something. Mm. That's happened to me. That happened to what? me. Well, yeah. You've cut your head off? I've cut, uh, accidentally decapitated the queen. Yeah. Oh. Then the, why? I thought you said beekeeper had cut their head off. Yeah, well, the head of the queen. Yeah, not the beekeeper have cut. Right, the, yeah, yeah, not the subject. Human. An object. Um, right. What does the queen actually look like, Emma? Does it look like a big bee? Yeah, she's, she'll she'll have massive. a a distended like abdomen where all of the le the eggs are. So what the the worker bees will des decide. Stop right? fucking looking at me <laughs> <laughs> with anything that's got a distended abdomen <laughs> in the sentence, <laughs> asshole. Okay. <laughs> Get it out of your system. Okay. I'm trying to learn about bees here, specifically honeybees, specifically the queen bees. Okay. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> so the, what, what will happen is, whatever the situation is that the, 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 the colony have decided that they need a new queen, they will select an egg that the queen has laid um, and they, that, that egg that will be an egg for three days and that will hatch into a larva. And at that point, the kind of three-day mark, then they change that larva's diet to specifically royal jelly. I don't know if you've ever heard of royal jelly before, but that's what royal jelly is I thought for. it was like a brand. No, it's a it's a substance that comes from the the head of the worker bee. Is there ordinary jelly as well? Well, the the larva that aren't going to be queens that would be workers, they will be like fed proteins and a little bit of royal jelly, but not like not a as a pure diet of royal jelly as the queen will be. So that because that egg has been fed that substance, that diet, that different diet then that becomes a, a queen bee. So the queen bee will be like, she's genetically different. She's got um, ovaries and she can lay eggs and things like that. This is fascinating. It's crazy. This is fascinating. Could humans eat royal jelly? You can, yeah. And you can see it in the cell, in the queen cell. I've got some queen cells here if you want to see them. Yes, please. What do you mean queen cells? You've got so, a bag of bees. So... These are, so this year I started breeding my own queen bees. Started a little bit last year, but. Is there anything in this jam jar that's going to sting us? It looks like pasta. Oh, it, it also looks slightly it like looks a thimble. Peanut. A thimble, right? Let's pick this right. up. Right. So the is plastic real one? bit isn't actually from, obviously, that's. Oh, okay. so what we're holding here, we've got a, a small yellow plastic aperture, and then we've got what looks like. Could you pass me an aperture, point? please? Yeah. So and then we've got what, look, what looks like a small cone of 
Well, honeycomb. <laughs> I create a situation in the hive that makes the colony think that they're queenless. And then I give them three-day-old larvae. And because there's the absence of queen pheromone, because I've hidden her, I hide her at the bottom. I hide the queen at the bottom and put like a pheromone blocker in. Oof. And and then I put little, in those little yellow cups, I put then little larvae that I graft out of cells. And then because of the situation that I've caused in the hive, then the worker bees automatically go into queen rearing mode and they feed, they will then feed the larva royal jelly and they will leave a little, a big bit of royal jelly in the cell. That's a cat cell that didn't hatch and that's Joseph. a cell that did hatch. Oh, so, so she, mine has got an open end yeah, so the and Joe's queen, is still closed. Joe's is still closed. So I have never opened that. Could there be something inside? There's going to be a queen in there. What, in the one that Joe's holding right yeah. by his face? A little yeah, baby she, queen princess? She didn't, she didn't hatch, she died. But I don't know what's in there because I haven't opened Joe it. Joe's holding the tomb now, of a queen. It's a couple of months old, so it might not be the nicest. But you could oh, have a look and see, you could open the... What do you mean? There's something in it? Yeah. Like a Christmas present? <laughs> yeah. It's, like it's a it dead is. queen. Yeah. It's a dead yeah. queen. A dead queen in your hands. In that. So how do I open it then? Like, Is there a little... Well, then maybe with the tip of the pen. Yeah, open it with the pen. Well, are you prepared for what you might see? I don't see know, you? I feel like I'm doing <laughs> something... I feel like, like Howard Carter in the tomb of Tutankhamun. You're breaking the tomb of the dead. Yeah. Hang on. I don't know what's in there. You smell death there? Or honey? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very long smell process. <laughs> for someone with a nose as big as mine. <laughs> it's just fascinating. I'm just so overwhelmed with fascination and also I'm a bit scared. Are you, you scared? Are you sure I'm all right doing this? <laughs> Nothing's going to come out like a jack-in-the-box. <laughs> I'm going to break off the tip. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I screamed. I'm a little bit... Um, There's a tomb in there. The tomb door I hope there open. is something in it. I'd be really disappointed if it was empty. The tomb is open, Joe. What, have you, what are you pulling out? Oh, well, I'm pulling like... out like... It looks like an empty sack. Um, oh. oh no no! So that bit's empty. Looks a bit like thingy. So you've, and then you're gonna turn it on its end and tip it out. Yeah. Oh, what's this coming out? Oh my god! It I looks like something you've pulled out of your ear. So it, oh. describe it to us, Joe. Oh my god! Yes, I will. Yeah. Describe it to us. It is a mouldy, <laughs> um, tiny, unhatched. Um, bit of rock, <laughs> like, if I'm honest. <laughs> I can definitely see. Hang on. It's about four millimeters long by. A m uh, Don't ping it off. The it's desk. hard. <laughs> it's definitely got the formation of um, what would have been a queen. Would this have been a queen? That would have been a queen. So they go through different, a bit like whenever a caterpillar turns into butterflies, they go through different molts. So she would have died. Um, in between, um, you know, with the sort of partially formed molt and the molt that at the end, so she's probably got knockout wings or something like that. She hasn't. You're right. Mm. There's no. I'm just going to take a picture of her. Bless her heart. Well, we need to do. Want to name her? Yeah. yeah. What should we call her? <laughs> um, something regal. Queenie. Camilla. No, that's not a name, Camilla. is it? I was I was thinking Doris. Doris, that's not a queen's name, is it? Well, no, but she's dead, and it's easier to say dead Doris than it is dead Camilla. And I think that's a little bit disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> so, dead Doris, uh, I'm going to tuck her back in. Um, Into her. It's not, uh, it's not the first time, actually, that I've experienced that. I believe uh, I had this box that I left outside. It was a flat pack of a kid's water thing garden and didn't get around doing it and then I saw loads of I think they were wasps mm -hmm. not bees how, how do I tell tell the difference again well a lot of people get honeybees and wasps mixed up so honeybees will be they will look like wasps but they will be like a darker color okay. whereas wasps are very definite yellow and black okay well th this bit might help me work out what they were uh, there was like what looked like a hive formed inside this box because there's this like that sort of size no it's like uh it was like flattened mm -hmm. up against this box with mm -hmm. different holes mm -hmm. and i took it out and as i took it out 
there was like similar to this it had like coverings over it and there was about five or six that you opened it up and they were either wasps or bees mm -hmm. in them dead oh in like th exactly what they've done there like that and i had like five or six of them and i got the kids out to be like oh come look at this there's like little small like wax cups yeah it sounds like bumblebee, like a species of bumblebee. Oh, so did I, so I, it's been on my mind. Did I kill them? Yeah. What? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> if I'd have left them, they'd have been okay. Oh, fucking hell. Emma. <laughs> the kids enjoy it at least. Fucking, yeah, they did. It's really <laughs> fascinating, but now. <laughs> God, I've just got. So they were in like a water, like a water paddling pool kind of thing. They were just in a cardboard box. And they'd started forming this, uh -huh. whatever it was. And that was on the ground? Yeah. Probably bumblebees. Okay, I feel less guilty. <laughs> they weren't going to survive anyway. Thank you for doing that one. Right, we, we're going to have a quick break. Mm -hmm. We're going to buzz off. Not very good. Not good? We're going to... We're going to... Be a short period of time. Better. Be back soon. Even better. <laughs> Fuck, what they said. So, I've got to be honest, you are looking magnificent today. What about you? You're looking lovely too. I wonder if it's anything to do with our new wardrobe from Hera. I think you might be right, Joe. Like, when you told me I needed a new wardrobe, I was slightly sceptical because it's really hard to find something that works for you, but also works for me. That's the thing though, mate. Hera offer good quality, attainable clothing. And whilst they do specialise in denim and comfortable sweats, they've got a wide range and versatile collection for both men and women. Well, that's good news. Mate, honestly, their stuff is great. It fits lovely, it looks great, and it's super comfy. Where can people find Hera, Joe? You can go and treat yourself to a brand new look at heraclothing.com. That is H E. R A clothing dot com. Hey, you want a jumper as nice as mine? Go to Hera clothing dot com. Come on, come on, come on. I'm dancing like this because I feel so good, and I feel so good because I've got my Hera clothes on. If you want to feel as good as I do, look as good as I do in this Hera hoodie that I've got. Go to heraclothing.com. Hera. 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 That's H E R A clothing.com. You know, with the queens, mm -hmm. can they abdicate? What do you mean? So can they not become well, not Well, can they queens? renounce one's throne? Well, the, the worker bees often renounce them. So the, the worker bees decide that. Like a revolution. Mm -hmm. So they will, it's called supersedure. So they will uh, sack her off, basically. They'll, they'll smother her to death or oh. hotball her. So hotballer. Hotballer. <laughs> they will hotball the queen. Yeah, so they'll <laughs> gather all around the queen what? and smother her. <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing at that. <laughs> but fuck me, these bees are ruthless. They are ruthless. Quite deviant, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So they just go, what? She's a shit queen. Let's get a new one. Superseder, yeah, that happens all the time. So, like, um, a couple of queens that I grafted early on in the season. So I was going to say, like, the other like thing that can happen with queens is if the colony needs, like, if they're queenless and they've only got a larva that's maybe like four days old, which is really too old for um for them to turn into a proper queen, they will still do it. But that what they'll get is a be or a queen that's in between worker and queen, it's like intercast. So in that case, that that queen would only be good for a very short period of time, and they would sack her off and supersede her. So whenever the queen lays her first couple of eggs, they will use those eggs at the earlier stage and turn those into proper queens. And so, but the queens also kill each other. So whenever a colony, what's going on in these hives? Whenever a colony, um, say say they're superseding the queen they will draw out a couple of queen cells because they'll never leave themselves with just one option. Clever. Clever. 
And the first the, the first queen to hatch, she will locate the other queen cells and sting through the side of the wall. See off her rivals. See off her rivals. And, and probably have got a queen cell in there somewhere that's been torn down at the side. And that's how you know. It's like Queen Elizabeth getting rid of Mary, Queen of Scots. So we have to put cages around the queen cells to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we will put queen cages on the cell. So you'll have that peanut shaped cell with something that looks like a hair roller around it. Like a and sting then, proof yeah, sheath. It's a sh yeah, yeah. So that whenever, if you have 10 queen cells, you'll get 10 queens rather than one queen and 10 de or nine de dead queens. A bee, this is fucking brilliant. Wild, <laughs> fascinating, brilliant. But the way you're talking about all these bees and the system and the structure of everything, there's... Super intelligent, surely. Like super intelligent. That's how. That's why I ended up getting into beekeeping. Is I took a spoonful of honey and it was lovely, and just sat ten years ago and started googling, how, you know, how is honey made? Because I didn't really know when I was what age am I? I'm forty four, so I've been thirty four, and I didn't really understand. And it was reading all of those facts and learning about all of those things in time that was like, oh, this is amazing. I need to be part of this. That's so. It is. It's incredible. Let's talk honeys, Joe. Yeah. Are you a honey you fan? Love it. Favourite honeys? Do you like it? All right. Runny. Run, you like a runny over a set? Well, I thought set's bad. I thought yeah. set is bad when it, like, because I usually get runny honey, local as well, because apparently that's good to nice touch. have your, no, for your immunity. Is it? Apparently it's good to have the the local bees because it's good for, I don't know why. In fact, that would bring me on to, in fact, no, whilst we're on it, Vanilla. the manuka honey situation. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a load of bollocks? Because they charged me 20 quid for a pot of manuka honey when I could get one for three quid. I wouldn't be buying three pound manuka. I wouldn't be buying three pound any honey, but three pound manuka honey isn't going to be 100% manuka. Honey is one of the most faked foods in the world. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Right, hang on. We... <laughs> but then, so back to the honey that I usually get in the pot, and then if I've left it in the cupboard or leave it for a while, it then starts going from clear to crystallised, is it's, it, or yeah, something like yeah, that? And yeah. then it's harder to spread, mm -hmm. but still tastes incredible. I just think it's going mouldy. No. But you can buy it like that. Well, honey will naturally crystallise because honey is made up of lots of different nectars which have lots of different sugar crystal sizes. So, for instance, at home we're a little bit colder and our nectar, so if we have... Um, nectar from rapeseed, you know, we see those big yellow fields. Mm. Rapeseed's a very, very thick nectar, so that will crystallize almost straight away, which is where you would get your set honey. But then, because the whenever the bees, whenever the honey bees collect the honey, in each cell they don't mix nectar, so every cell of the frame will have a hundred percent whatever nectar they've collected in it. They won't mix that, but whenever the beekeeper like extracts the honey, obviously all of that mixes. So what you'll find is you know a honey that's maybe made up of slightly looser nectar and some thicker nectar, and then you'll get like a, a multi layers of crystallisation but don't put it in the fridge because it'll, it'll always crystallise so really never put honey in no, the fridge no you don't need to it's, a fer it's like it's a fermented food so it's completely okay to keep out of the fridge it, like it lasts forever the manuka honey so it's manuka because the manuka flower mm -hmm. is the thing it comes from so I've seen this in New Zealand it seems to have almost miraculous properties you can put it on bandages yeah and people like it's been used for lots of different things um and in, in medicine and, and it, there is a, a massive truth level to that but you need to be buying manuka honey that's like 30 40 quid a jar it's what EMF is manuka? manuka is a it's a bush the manuka bush i think it's a bush i think it is yeah Go it's with plant it's a plant yeah it's a plant and um it's got so honey Obviously, honey comes from bees, but doesn't really, it, it originates from the plants. So it's got plant power as well as a little bit of bee power. Oh. So we have a lot of ivy honey at home at this time of year. Well, it kind of, it's what the bees collect in the autumn time because that's what's in, in flower and nectar flow. Um, and it's very medicinal as well. But like in, I suppose in New Zealand, they have a massive amount of the manuka plant. Um and yeah, the, so there's GMF factors, so ultra manuka factor, and it's it's the level of healing power that that manuka plant has had. So the more you pay for it, the better you get. So how is honey actually made, Emma? Oh, well, I was going to talk about this earlier on whenever you were talking about the bees beating their wings, because that's that's part of how it's made. So the forager bees go out and collect the nectar. Forager bees are worker bees at the very end of their life. 
because the last job that the worker bees do, the female worker bees do, is forage and collect the nectar and bring it back. They've got lots of other jobs within the hive before that. So there's like maybe like 60,000 bees in a hive. And, and how, do they, how do they know when they're going to die? Uh, is it like that Justin Timberlake film where they've got the like time on their arm? You just said, oh, they start foraging when they get towards the yeah, end of so their life. Yeah, they kind of live like, like 30, 40 days. It just oh, depends. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Such a fucking stupid question. <laughs> it's like, how do we know we're getting older? We're just getting older. They kind of just die. They, they die because know. they work themselves to death. Oh, you'll see, like, sometimes you'll see in the frame, you'll see a bee with, like, really tattered wings, and you know that that, like, that bee's on the way out. Yeah, absolutely. My, my wings yeah. feel a bit tattered these days. <laughs> Yeah, and my fucking back hurts from carrying you while shagging. It's <laughs> a bit weird. <laughs> it was a strange night. <laughs> Sometimes you experiment, Emma. Back, to how, the, back to how that honey's being made. So the foragers go out and they will find a patch of nectar and uh, they will bring that nectar back. And whenever they bring that nectar back, nectar is 80% water, 20% sugar. How do they bring it back? They, well, they carry it. They've got like a stomach that they they so suck they, it up. Like they've, suck it up. Yeah, they've in got the mouth. proboscis. Yeah, like a they've got a long tongue. So they suck oh, it it's up. It's a tongue. Mm -hmm. It's a proboscis, and they suck. So they it stick up. it out. Suck so it, it up. Goes, mm -hmm. And they just keep going. Yeah. What sort of level of like mm. compared to their body ratio? How much can they carry? Not very much. Like I think I read before. I've read it a few times. I haven't like cross-checked it but I think it is true that like a one honeybee will collect a teaspoon of honey in their whole life in their life yeah how, and how long's their life well 30 to 40 days in 40 days but that they said they need to fucking work harder but that said they're only foraging for maybe the last seven days of their life so I don't know whether that's been like factored into that equation or whether that's just a very kind of broad spectrum. Only a teaspoon. But not very much. Right. So what happens when they bring the nectar back? So they the bring honey? the nectar back and they put it into the honeycomb, the little cell that they've made right, with beeswax. And they flap their wings. At One of their jobs will be to flap their wings at the cell and that will dehydrate the honey from 20% sugar, 80% water to 80% sugar, 20% water. And then they cap it off with a beeswax cell, with a beeswax cap, beeswax cap, and then that's it. And they save that for a rainy day. So they cap it off. Yeah. And it's just there for a rainy day. Yeah. If we didn't nick it all, so, well, if you didn't nick it all, yeah. to then provide to us. Yeah. What what's what's the purpose of that honey for them? Is that is that for them? To yeah. survive. Yeah, it's for them. Because honeybees don't die off. Like So bumblebees only need a little bit of honey. They they collect a little bit. They make a little bit of honey. They collect nectar and make a little bit of honey because they don't need the rainy day kind of. Um, they don't, don't have as many rainy days, I suppose. The worker bees, because or the honeybees, because they last right through, they don't die off. They overwinter as a colony. They will need that all of winter. So it's for winter. So, but, so it's for them? It's for them, yeah. So you extracting this honey? So I'm an ethical beekeeper. Meaning what? So um, you're nice to them. Yeah. What I, you I say? Sorry, can I just have some of your bit, some of your honey? Well, we, you we've kind of we've kind of had a conversation about it, and they know that I'm going to take a little bit, but leave them with some. Who's in charge though? The ratio. Definitely me. Mm. <laughs> was my opening question. Mm -hmm. um, was going to be is beekeeping cruel? So then that's a really good question because imagine imagine locking you up in a wooden what did you call it? Well, they're there that they can leave if they want. I mean, they're they're just there. They want to stay there. There's nothing sort of key. Oh, them so it's in. a choice. It's a choice. Okay, but then you end up milking them and getting their sweet juices. <laughs> that doesn't sound good to me. So so yeah, there's like lots of things in beekeeping that I would not do because I don't like them and don't agree with them like qu um, clipping the queen's wings oh. ever she's mated so that she doesn't because there's a whole thing of there's swarming I'm sure you've heard of swarms the film is there a film called swarms yeah it's about it's these fine. killer bees mm. that bring over a virus do they bring a virus or they just killer bees no no sorry they're not killer bees they're just bees mm. that come and bring a virus oh. it's one of the shittest films I've seen it's got a 3.1 on IMDb. It's <laughs> awful. 3.1? Yeah. Out of 10. Okay. Is it a recent film? Um, Is it one from the 80s? Don't know what year it was. Right. It was bad. 
Not as good as um, the B movie. Oh, it's it's completely fake. I hear it. What B I'm movie? Andy B movie. Yeah, because it's about a little boy. So, hang and, on a minute. And there's a king and the queen. It's not. It's not like. It's not correct. It's like if oh they were going God, to do right. it. If they were going to do it, why not just let the little girl be? And they just didn't want a girl to do it. That's why they didn't want to have a girl in charge. <laughs> well, I don't know why I take it so seriously, but I have a real thing against the B movie. I don't know how we got there to back to the ethics? Oh, that was it. Here we go. So you're nicking the bees. You're you're nicking their food. Well, yes. Yeah, so We're I, nicking their food, basically. Yeah, and I think that's where vegans um, kind of get the they boycott honey and beekeepers and things like that. Um, so yeah, you do take the honey. Yeah, absolutely do. But like, I leave behind quite a lot, and then I would leave behind. I would leave frames um, that I would put back in in the winter. So I do feed the honey back to the bees as as well as take some. But I don't need, like, so because I make cosmetics with all of my stuff, I don't need, um, I don't sell honey in jars. Um, so I don't need as much. What? Would you just lop it in someone's hand? How do you, <laughs> yeah. you give... Like you were fair. How do you give people their honey? I make soaps and creams and balms and skin What, so you don't sell any honey? No. You just use it to make... I make, yeah. I'm, what? Yeah. You don't sell honey? No. You make shit out of it? I make shit out of it. Is it edible soap? No. What do I, you... Hang on, talk to us about what you make out of this honey then. So, um, I have a business and a website and an app and a shop. What's Valley it called, called please? Beehaven Body Care at Coda UK. Beehaven, because I'm Miss Beehaven. Is it B E E? Yeah. H A V E N. And the products are. So yeah, so I've got I make two hundred di- well, more than two hundred different like yeah. products. Yeah. Have you brought any in? Yeah. I Can have. we have a look? Yeah. So my me and my daughter run the shop. It's what? me and my daughter. Um, I make everything, and she does all of the other stuff. All from honey. Yeah. So I put you in some beeswax, so you could see that. So we will talk about that. What do we do with beeswax? Do we make candles? Oh my god, that's lovely. Can I eat that? <laughs> <laughs> you can chew it if you want. So that Well hang on, what's beeswax? Beeswax is a wax that's secreted from the bees gland. So they it's made up so they use it for building, basically. It's a building material. So they Yeah, but what is it? Is it so from it's, his gland. Is it their shit? You still want to put it in your mouth? No, no. It's um it's kinda like it's a secretion from their body, so I suppose it's like they're, I don't know. We don't have anything, well, we, sp- we don't have anything that would match it to compare it to. But it's not going to be sweat, could, is it? Because sweat's. It's probably like, like toe jam or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting that. Toe jam? <laughs> Be to- beeswax is toe jam. Well, it's, 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 it's well a, I, eat, it's I eat my toe jam, so I might as well <laughs> eat the bees' toe jam. Or like maybe like a toenail. I don't know. It's like it's like a thing that's secreted from their body that they it's a, use. A secretion. It's a secretion. I actually bought this for you because I thought that you might like have aches and pains. What have we got here? It's a little jar. So that's that's a magnesium beeswax balm, and that's beeswax and honey and Guinness soap oh and my, body cream. smell of this jar. Oh, so how would, that smells amazing. Need how would Joe use this balm? Can we apply some of this balm now? You can, just don't put it on your eyes. Where can I put it? Guys. Put it, yeah. Whilst you two have been doing that, I've eaten. You've been eating? Right. You have? I wonder what you were chewing on. Any good? It's going to be very, like... Oh, it's coming out. Yeah. It doesn't taste of anything. No. Well, it's... So, there's probably lots of bee crap in that as well, because... <laughs> <laughs> you just introduced that now, Emma. Because I I filtered that, but I didn't like second filter it, so there's probably be be shit and things in it as well. But I'll be fine. Yeah, but you that's go. good for your immunity. It is, yeah, 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 yeah good bacteria. So it could be good actually. You could make that like a chewing, a weird chewing gum. Actually, anyway, sorry. What's this? The balm. So that's like a muscle balm, okay. and then there's face. So Tom, creams. you don't need any of that. I'll apply that to my arms. Well, it's not skeleton balm, is it? <laughs> or bone balm. It's muscle balm. And okay. I will find some muscles on me. Oh, it smells fantastic. So there's magnesium chloride in that as well, which is really good. And camphor, which is really, really good for like muscle soreness. So we make all these things in the shop in Ballygown. And then Can we've I got put a... it on my fingers, actually. There you go. Mm-hmm. I might have a little bit. Oh, more. my. Oh, that smells now. fantastic. It feels great as well. Oh, you could do a nice massage with that. Good. 
You make this? Yeah. Oh my god. So That's yeah. Delicious. There's like two hundred things that we okay. do. Some of them don't have beeswax on it, but everything in here that I've bought today has beeswax. Right. So what's that? So what's that soap with the tash on? That is my beer for bloke. So it's beeswax honey Guinness. Uh, so you have one of those, Joe. Yeah, this is going you. straight into my bathroom. Like, yeah. can we keep these? Yeah, these are all oh, for you guys. God. Smells sensational. And then we've got like my best-selling Be Beautiful face cream. It we sell tons of that. It's beeswax and honey is really really because I had the reason I started a cosmetics business was because I had really bad acne. I had acne from eleven until a couple of years ago, and I had been a beekeeper for about five years, and um, I decided that because I tried everything, that I would like put some beeswax and honey on my zits, basically. And I made this. It's actually the Beekeeper's Intense Skin Balm. So I made that, and then it cleared my spots in a week. Did and you? then, uh, so I started a business out of it, yeah. That is incredible. So we would get a lot of customers in the shop that come in with issues like psor psoriasis and eczema, loads of people. And it's like, it's everything that's out there in shop bought stuff. Yeah. Like on the, in supermarket shelves, it's filled with detergents and things that really, really, yeah, really hurts people. Let's talk about your get up. Because oh. you, you obviously haven't come dressed as a beekeeper. No. You haven't come dressed as a stereotypical beekeeper. No. You don't look like a stereotypical <laughs> beekeeper. But what the fuck do you wear when you're keeping your bees? Is it, talk us through the uniform. Yeah, so there, you know, there's the bee suit that you'll be familiar with, like sort of like a, bo like a boiler suit with the big hood, the, the veil. Like from ET? Yeah, like, yeah. like Ebola virus kind of yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. So there's that, but like they're not, well, my one isn't anyway. Most of the ones that people wear aren't like sting proof. So you still get stung. So if the, the bees want to sting you and you're not wearing protective clothes underneath your suit, you still get stung. I get stung. What's the time. point in the suit? I don't know. <laughs> if it's not a sting. I know. It's if not ever a suit still... of armour that doesn't stop a sword. Yeah, yeah. So the veil will definitely stop stings to the face as long as you've got it zipped up, which I didn't have once and I got like a really bad. But you got in? Oh, hundreds. Where have you, hundreds where, of bees yeah, under the lid. Yeah. What, and you got stung loads? Yeah. Where's yeah. the worst place you've been stung? Oh, well, probably the eyelid has been the worst bit. Oh. Tom, have you been stung by a bee? Yes. It always surprised me how much it hurts. It's, it is sore. You're like, ow, that really hurts. Yeah. Why do bees sting you? Well, if they're meant to be the friendly ones, why are they why are they stinging us? Because they think that you're like a danger to them. So bees are funny because well, honeybees like they don't like. So if you go to the hive, they don't like the color black. So you couldn't wear like a black bee suit. They would just come out and just like punch you in the side of the head. What's their issue with black? Black um, at the hive. So if you're if if you're wearing black and you know in the street or nothing's gonna like they they don't get annoyed then. It has to, it's whenever you're at their hive. So um, they say that it like um, looks like the so the pupils of an animal that's gonna attack their hive. Like a giant yeah. pupil. Oh, I yeah, thought it'd like be the other way around. Like if I've got like really colourful clothing on, that that would attract them and but not. So you're thinking if you actually should be wearing a yellow and black striped outfit. And they're going to either think one of us, yeah, or it could be the other thing where they think oh, it's the size of that bastard. No, or, or like if I wore a flower, if I wore a fl like They'd a come to you, wouldn't they'll they? They'll come yeah. to you. Oh, they, they would come to. Yeah, but, but they... I don't want that. What What do I wear to make them not come to me? Um, you can't stop it. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> what about water. What about something that appeared to look like water? Like green or something? Maybe you could mm. camouflage. Is it true that if I clap? They don't come near me. I don't think so. I heard I've that, never I, heard that, I heard that it vibrates the air and they go, fuck that shit. No. Not, having <laughs> really? not having any of that. I don't know. So if you get a bee like, coming around your food and all that lot, you just start clapping. It's bad clapping in it whilst I'm doing the pod. Um, the other thing about the clapping though, Joe, is right, maybe that would actually trap them because I heard, Emma, mm -hmm. the bees are amazing dancers. They do. They have a waggle dance. Yeah, they 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 ha That's how they communicate through dance. I thought they. Bzzz, I Wait, thought they spoke to it like they well, buzzed each other. And they touch as well. They touch and they communicate through that. But so back to the forager bees. So whenever they go out, they'll some of the forager bees will go out to specifically find patches of nectar and forage, and they will come back to the hive, and they will tell the other bees what direction the f the patch of forage is. Um, where where it is in relative relativity to the sun, 
Um, so they'll say like fly 90 degrees to the sun and fly for three miles and it will look a certain way. And they do all that through waggling their bodies and running around. So they'll come into the hive. It's, I mean, the, the whole waggle dance has been translated, so they know what it means. But they'll be on the frame if the frame was flat. And the bee will come in and she will run for a certain length of time. And then she will dance a certain way and waggle a certain way and repeat that. And that te- then tells the other forager bees exactly where the patch of nectar is that she's been to. So through the medium of dance, yeah. they can give complicated in- directional yeah. instruction. Yeah. Right, Joe. what would your dance be if... <laughs> it's bollocks. Not happening. Yep. It's work. <laughs> right, Tom. Could what you- would your dance be? <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly where you were going. <laughs> Go could on. You, how complicated a set of directions could you dance? Like, to get from the studio where we are today to the yeah. tube station... Yeah. Okay, so you've got to come out of the studio. You've got to turn, turn right. right. Take the first right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what... Why don't you do something the right side of your body? Like, like you're indicating <laughs> right, like a boosh, boosh, boosh. Have they, <laughs> hang on, have bees got arms? <laughs> They've got, like, multiple legs. I suppose you could call, like... Well, how many you legs? Say. I think they've got six. Six. Okay. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? It's the waggle dance. Okay. <laughs> what else do you want to know? It sounds a bit like you're doing a David Bowie impression. Turn <laughs> <laughs> <Some> right. <laughs> right. And then. Go straight on. And then ele- I don't know how to get to the. I don't know how to get to the tube station. I've got a taxi here. Did you? Yeah. So you well, call an Uber <laughs> through the medium of the but also bees don't need cool to like Uber. <laughs> bees don't need to like do that. They kind of just go straight and like as the crow flies, I suppose. As the bee flies. So they speak to crows as well. Yeah. Why do they <laughs> I love it. I love it. Just one, got yeah. to the point where fuck okay. off. <laughs> Honestly. Never. Fuck off. Whatever you ask, <laughs> yes is the answer because I'm fucking sick of <laughs> I've got a lot of time for that. Why does a bee have to die when it stings you? Well, that's a really good question because not all bees do die whenever they sting you. Only honeybees die whenever they sting you. Oh. And it's I think it's part of the whole evolution thing that I really don't understand because bumblebees and wasps don't. And the reason that honeybees do is do do die whenever they sting you is that they have like a barbed stinger. So it's like this a short a sword shape at the bottom. So it never goes into the skin. And the bee flies away. It pulls their digestive tract out of their Whoa. arsehole, basically. <laughs> like a prolapse. Yeah, like a massive prolapse. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep very serious here. <laughs> you fucking talking about prolapse in bees? Look, you've done. You've watched a lot of people. I've you've watched a lot of prolapses. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You've lifted a lot of heavy weights in your time. <laughs> you've done a lot of squats. Don't tell me that you don't fear the prolapse. I fear the prolapse, but I've had a really good thing. I've never had a pile, never had a prolapse. Okay. Something I'm proud of. Okay. <laughs> but I don't judge you if you've had either. Okay. You do you. Would this, if I did have a pile, <laughs> for example, would it help with my, yeah. your balm here? Yeah. Okay. yeah the, the, the beekeeper's intense skin balm. Put that on anything. Beekeeper's intense it. skin balm. Yeah. Perfect yeah. for the pile. Fixes everything. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I could advertise that. Maybe you have one pot for the piles, one for the face, just yeah. for... You don't want to double dip. Never double dip. I've just eaten bee shit. <laughs> I've double dip what I want. <laughs> Love it. So the death thing, is that not a flaw in evolution? Because mm. what what is the point in the bee stinging someone if it's only going to leave if it's only going to lead to its own demise? It's definitely a flaw. It's definitely a flaw. Um, so like every time that I get stung, it's it's sore, but I do get like slightly sad because mm. I, sometimes the, bee, the honeybees don't sting you deep enough for it to pull out it can pull out clean if you know what I mean so <laughs> um she's been here for an hour <laughs> <laughs> and now she's the one <laughs> she's the one making you see what I mean didn't even just <laughs> so sometimes it, it, and in the odd occasion it doesn't kill the honeybee but mostly it does so it's definitely a flaw in the evolution because you know, if if the 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 colony is a, is defending off, say, a couple of different wasps or whatever, um, they won't die in that instance. But whenever it comes to the beekeeper or human skin, it will. I don't. I don't think I've ever been stung. What? 
No, I've been, loads of nettles, but I've never done. I don't think I've been stung by a wasp or a bee. Really? Is, is it sore? It's really sore, Emma. Yeah, does yeah. it hurt? Yeah, it does. Um, so the worst one I ever got was um, I was at an event and I had like an observation hive. So it's a glass fronted hive that holds a few frames. So we'd been at the event for a few hours and I had the 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 couple of frames had been in this observation hive so the bees were a bit pissed off because it was a warm day and they were getting a bit angry and I was putting them back into their normal hive so I had my suit on but like quite often because my dad does the beekeeping with me as well quite often we're like the chuckle brothers like we're, we're not like <laughs> suited up properly we're not zipped in that kind of thing anyway I didn't have my hood zipped around the neck and I shook the frame and the bees just went into my hood <gasps> yeah and there was oh there was just so many so the whole hood was filled with bees and I took my hood off, but like I, d I had a little bit more hair then. They were stuck in my hair and they were stinging my face. I was just, it was, it was like we were laughing. It was quite funny. And then whenever all of the bees stopped, either they died because they'd stung me or dad had squished them. Um, and then my head started to swell. So, and I didn't really notice it so much at the time because whenever you're doing that, you can't just go, right, I'm going home now, I've had enough. You had to, we had to go back and fix what we were doing. And it wasn't until the next morning that um, that I woke up and I didn't notice it at the time. But whenever I looked in the mirror, my face was twice the size and my eyes were on like the side of my head and my bridge Whoa. of my nose had almost disappeared. I looked like an avatar. It was ridiculous. Can I say okay. avatar? Right. If, so you've got all these products which look fantastic and thank you for are these definitely yeah. me and Tom to keep yeah, my yeah. wife would actually there's love to whole, keep there's a whole but you've got there. have you got actual honey yes and is that raw when you say yes, raw honey mm -hmm. why why is it raw because it's not cooked yeah because it's not it's been extracted without heat so then so it's Spun. what what's then put, what then makes it unraw so the the rouse honey for example that i put on my toast what's that is that not honey? Well, I don't know about rice specifically. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> the honey general, that I put on my yeah, toast. Like so like um like the cheap honey? Yeah. It's like they say, and there's been lots of documentaries done about it. So I'm only taking the taking the information from there. But it's been like it's come from many different countries and on that journey it's then sort of watered down with cheap syrups quite a lot of honey now will be filled with high fructose corn syrup so basically what marshmallows what? are made from what? so and also also large companies that do that 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 produce honey in volume cheap honey in volume quite often those bees that it's come from they'll not like go out and forage for the nectar they're just kind of fed cheap syrup like a battery bee so yeah it's like a battery bee so they will be like fed the cheap syrup and they will dehydrate the cheap syrup and then that cheap cheap dehydrated syrup will be cut with other cheap syrup so that's how you get like a two pound twenty yeah. i feel i feel shit that's the honey that i have in my porridge and I that's just, what i mean yeah. now it's not honey no. you, and you're fucking fueling the 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 corporation yeah. you we should feel bad about this Genuinely now. I, I feel We've terrible. got to stop doing this. I'm going to. Sometimes you've got to because, oh, I've got nipped down shit. We haven't got any. Oh, quickly. Here. But from now on, I'm getting local honey and local produce like that because it's fucking legit. I ain't having none of that watered down shit that's been dehydrated and fucking shit bees. July is the main nectar flow in Northern Ireland. So in terms of honey collection by the by our bees, um, July is the month. But we had the wettest July on record. So we only we actually only got ten percent of our honey harvest no. this year. Yeah, just things like that always happen. And the rain we had last week, I have bees on an island with a bridge out to it in the middle of like a pond, and nice. they almost floated away because there was so much rain. But they're okay. But can I? Can, you we, can. can we try so some? So this, this is this like, like exclusive because <laughs> nobody else has got my honey. Honestly, I'm what so excited mean? about this. Oh, because you don't sell it. No, I don't <gasps> sell it. No. Okay. So this is that's why it's not like in so labelled we've got jars. A, we've got a pot each here. Yeah. Unscrew the lid, Joe. Give me a sniff. And this will be wildflower honey, so it was for oh, the summer. This is so good. Thoughts, Joe, as you know. Oh my god, that is strong. Strong. That's like a. I don't want to sound stupid. That smells amazing. <laughs> but. It smells like honey. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's honey. <laughs> no, no. No, no. Like it smells. It smells like honey. Oh, it smells you know, amazing. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. It's like the, it's like everything in your brain. It's like everything that your brain wants of honey. 
It smells like honey. It doesn't smell. It doesn't smell like that watered down shit that I spread on the toast, or put in my porridge. Are you gonna have a spoon of it? I am. Yeah. I was just gonna nick it. Actually. Are you gonna do a full spoon? Are you gonna dip? No, I've got bad teeth, so I might as well just keep having bad teeth by doing loads. Right, so you've got a decent spoonful. It's under the nose, it's in the mouth. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> and honey's filled with good bacteria, so it's really, really good for your gut. Is it? A lot of people, what what I find a lot of people do with their honey whenever they're like taking it for um, like sore throats or coughs or colds, they put it into hot water and that mm. ruins that that ruins the good <gasps> bacteria. Yeah, yeah. That's what Try not I, to that's do that. That's what I do. I do. I make a. Um, so nice. I've, I feel one coming as well. It's got a long. Oh my god! It's aftertaste. so good, but it's yeah. so honey rich. Yeah. And I want to eat the whole thing, but I no, also know that's know really bad for me. Yeah. Oh that's my god! So nice. <sighs> Oh god, it's on my fingers. And if you've got any like wounds or whatever, if you can, you can just put a little bit of that on. Uh, uh, that's what they've used for years to really? draw it. Yeah, to draw it infections. And the, the the benefit of that is you could lick your own wound. You get, literally could. Emma, you've. Yeah. I've just been. I like Tom said. I could sit here and <laughs> ask you a million more questions. Um, it's been fascinating. Fucking weird at times, actually. Um, it's been a journey. It's also yeah, it has been a hell of a journey. I'm really, th- I can't believe that I'm dead. Fo- she's not dead because she was never alive. Technically, no, she didn't. Like, okay, I feel, I feel okay about about that now. Um, I would like you mainly for me, but also to plug you. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me your socials? Where I can find, where the listeners can find, where top, where we can all find your products, please. So socials are MissBehaven123 on TikTok, Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Um, the products are available from Behaven Body Care, B-E-E-H-A-V-E-N, bodycare.co.uk. And there's also an app that you can download in the App Store as well called Behaven Body Care. Oh, my God. And if you live in uh, Northern Ireland, you can call to our shop in Ballygowan where you'll meet me and my daughter. Ballygowan. Ballygowan. Oh, Ballygowan. Ballygowan. Ballygar. Guy. Gow. Yes. Ballygowan. 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 That's it. You've gone Welsh. Yay. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking miskel, miskel felon. You tell me sit down all the bloody time. <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. Emma, thank you so much. Thank for you so much on. for having me. It's been great.